Today's show is sponsored by Enigma Elements. As filmmakers, we're always looking for ways to level up production value of our projects and speed up our workflow. This is why I created Enigma Elements, your one-stop shop for film grains, color grading LUTs, vintage analog textures like VHS and CRT images, smoke, fog textures, DaVinci Resolve presets, and much more. After working as an editor, colorist, post, and VFX supervisor for almost 30 years, I know what film creatives need to level up their projects. Check out EnigmaElements.com and use the coupon code IFH10 to get 10% off your order. I'll be adding new elements all the time. Again, that's Enigma, E-N-I-G-M-A, Elements.com. And we all were in festivals together with Il Mariachi, you know? And um, we went around the world with them and, and lucked out to be, as Quentin was finishing Reservoir Dogs, the last place it showed was uh, Toronto. And we were there. That was the second festival we were in. And when I met, and Robert, not a person with a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. You know, he's shy. So he just works on his thing, very obsessive. And he has 10 siblings, you know, I mean, I understand, you know. My, you know, you become friends with your the ones in your house. You know, you don't have time for anything else. <laughs> so, um, you know, you don't have time to go party. You don't have, you don't have money like that. You know, <laughs> so, so uh, when I met Quentin, I was like, oh! like I felt this immediate, like, oh, I found a friend for Robert. <laughs> you know, I swear to you, in the lobby of the Toronto hotel where we were staying, and I looked at him. Because somebody introduced him to me. I may have been Robert Newman. And I said, I want, you know, it was, oh, Maria, blah, 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 you know. And yeah. I was like, I want you to meet Robert. I want you to meet my husband. And he was like, let's go. Immediately, like, let's go. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I took him up to our room and I opened the door. I said, Robert, I have somebody for you to meet. It was like magic. Wow. It was magic to find this Brothers, yeah, brothers, brothers. Brother. They've been that since, you know? Yeah. They found each other and they could understand each other so well. You know, the same thing with Guillermo. There's just been certain people that Robert has done this with, you know, like very, you know, oh, I, clicked in with, you know? Yeah. And it's beautiful. Because, uh, you know, it's... It's It's not easy in this business. A bunch of fancy ones, you know? Um, <laughs> you know it's not, we don't live in L.A. We never wanted to live in L.A., you know? Right. So it's been a beautiful, I mean... Jim Cameron and Robert always hit it off like boom, you know, like very close knit. Wait. So people are like, how did Alita happen? It's like they've been friends for a long time. Jim right. and Robert have been friends for a, just like Guillermo del Toro and Jim Cameron, you know. Uh, yeah. Jim is his own kind of person, you know, very close, tight knit people. They don't really hang out with a bunch of, you know, Hollywood yeah. types. Right. You know? So, so yeah, so it's beautiful, you know. It's kind of, that. it's kind of like, um, you know, we can smell our own. Uh, when you meet someone yeah. like that, it's it's like, oh, okay, I found it. Look, growing up, you it's hard to find other filmmakers that you can connect or other people that you can connect with at that level. Uh, and that's why a lot of times when I'm when that I'm level of passion, that the, level pa- of passion. The, the that level of passion, the it's level it's of it's skill, it's and ex- like yes. all of that kind of because there's a lot of people who might be passionate, but that can actually pull off what you're doing. That's a very but, small group. Well, I think the passion though leads to everything to yeah. you doing it. Because, for example, in film school, it was hard for Robert because the other <laughs> people that he was working with to make Bedhead, you know, they oh, I got a party I got to go to, you know, I yeah. got to hurry up. That's right. never going to happen. The negativity is a very interesting thing. It, it was hard for him, you know, um, and he just kind of went, you know what, it's OK. And he did all those films by himself. He didn't really need people to right. work, to do Bedhead, <laughs> you know. So, so, uh, so- you know, it, it was. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that we were able to put in the public record the story of mariachi, <laughs> because it's been such an urban myth about so many things about mariachi. It's all true, though. And it's and all true. yeah, and it's, it's and it's beautiful. By the way, that with my heart full, I can mm-hmm. tell you. And the writing of the book. I mean, that's his diary. Right. I just yeah. Took his diary. He 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 entrusted it to me to edit it a little bit. I was the pre-editor before the editor got it. Um, you know, just I just, you know, made sure that it made sense, you know, because it's just a stream of consciousness. And I admire that. I don't write a diary. I don't. A, I don't, a journal, journal, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, not that, I'm, not, I'm not that person. You know, it's just yeah, I've, I've tried. I can't journal. I, I, I'm not. 
I've tried. I've sat down. I'm like, do it. Yeah. I can do a grateful list. That's about it. No, I mean, and that book and that book Rebel Without a Crew is still to this day. It's a seminal book in independent film. Uh, I, I've, I remember I was I remember when it came out I was in I was in film school in Orlando. I picked up the book and I read it in one sitting. I just sat there just in awe because you again and for people listening you have to understand in 91 92 I was in, well, in film school I was 94 95. I picked up a first mm -hmm. edition. I still have my first edition of of uh, Rebel Without a Crew. And wow. Oh yeah, no, I've, yeah, no, 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 soy serio, soy serio. Uh, <laughs> and I remember reading it. And for me, you, people have to understand in the nineties, there wasn't this, it wasn't cool to be the filmmaker just yet. The rock and roll filmmaker, the rock and roll director, which I think Quentin and Robert kind of created that kind of persona because Spielberg had been around and Scorsese and Coppola, but there wasn't the rock and roll kind of like present this kind of person. And so, but there was no information. There was no YouTube. There was barely any making ofs. There was like, you had laser discs with commentaries if you were lucky. There was nothing. That book for me, when I was reading it, it was like a portal into Hollywood, which seemed like a world away. And I was being taken on a journey with a, with a filmmaker, a Latino filmmaker. Like, so you have to understand the power of that for, for a Latino reading it was so influential and so powerful for me. Um, and I have such reverence for that book um, that I always tell people, I wrote a book uh, called Shooting for the Mob about how I almost yeah. made a, I almost made a movie for $20 million movie for the mafia. And I always tell people, Oh my God. Oh yeah. And then I was, and then in many ways, I so, so I don't know, wait a minute. So, wait a minute, fair out there, fair out there. so then what happened was I, I made this book and then in many ways, because of the mariachi story, a lot of the stuff that happens to me in that book, I got flown out to LA. I met the biggest movie stars. I bet I, I met big power players. And I'm like, oh my God, this is my mariachi, but I got this psychotic gangster behind me threatening my life on a daily basis. <laughs> so I always tell people, if you want to read two books in the film business, you read Rebel Without a Crew, and that's the way, that's the positive side of how a career could go. And then you read my book is the opposite side of the coin where I went into complete depression and almost oh got my myself God. killed. So uh, it's like the complete opposite. Uh, uh, yeah, That's the, that, I, would, I would say that that kind of book ends it. You know? like that book